Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Dr. Chris Featherstone here for yet another episode of Inside Scoop with my man, friend of mine. Uh, just a wealth of information. One of the most intelligent, the wealth of knowledge, one of the, the, the greatest referees that ever wore some stripes on his back and chest. Wow. Nick Patrick. If you're like that, I'm going to have to give myself a Barry Horowitz on that one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Good to see you, man. Oh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, man. So we talked about Sting last time, man. And so uh AEW just dropped a bombshell, man, out of out of nowhere. Uh we just saw him a few weeks ago on a, on a Legends episode. Uh, he was involved with with Randy Orton. We just saw him a, a month ago, you know, uh, on the Legends night, and all of a sudden we get a press release that AEW has acquired Paul White, the Big Show, and what a what a surprise, what a major surprise! And so, perfect time to talk about your uh, affiliation with Paul White, namely. A, a pay-per-view called Sold Out in 1997. He main evented uh, 1997 against Hollywood Hogan. Before we go to Sold Out, uh, just what are your thoughts on 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 show on Paul White? Of course, he's not the big show anymore because that's WWE's. But uh, Paul White uh, jumping over to AEW. He's uh, supposed to commentate a new uh, show called uh, AEW Dark. Um, uh, uh, elevation, I believe, uh, and then um, doing some memory work too. So he, uh, he so there's he's going to do both. What, what do you think, man? Well, I'm glad for him. I know Paul's getting on up there in age, so he's going. You know what he's. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see he has a break. It's right down there where he lives, so it's uh, good for him. You know, I think he's going to bring a lot to uh, to the company for him. He has. Uh, a good bit of knowledge himself. He's worked. You know, he's always been a top guy. They broke him in as a top guy, as you can see from the from the match that uh, we saw. They brought him in and they they had him trained down at the power plant with my father. My father was one that uh, trained him and, and helped to teach him how to uh, from the inside term. They call it work like a big man. Big guys work a little bit differently than, than the rest of the folks do. Average size guys or smaller guys. It's just a slightly different psychology. And uh, well, sometimes a huge difference in psychology, but uh, my dad helped him out with that, and uh, he was a really good guy. I remember him uh, coming down there, which, and you can see in, in that particular pay per view, he was really young and he was still really green. And uh, Hogan did one heck of a job because I remember in that time frame, Hogan uh, was really pushing for Paul and uh. Wanting him to fill in and be like the giant. In fact, I think they were trying storyline wise to say that he was like Andre's son. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, but uh, it, work wise, uh, Hogan really, he, he used great psychology. You know, you hear a lot of people blast Hogan, you know, well, he he's, couldn't do this. He wouldn't, well, maybe he not, might not have been the greatest technical worker in the business, but he certainly had psychology. And if, you, uh, and if you watch that particular match, he really made Paul, because Paul, was, like I said, he was young and he was green and he brought him in and he, he made him a giant. Yeah, even a couple of years before, I mean, like you said, they put Paul right into the main event picture. As a matter of fact, he won the world championship on his very first match. And so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, they built him up. And like you said, he, you know, uh, Hogan was, you know, doing his thing and, and then all of a sudden, this big old guy came out, and it was very mysterious. And uh, you know, they built him as Andre the Giant Son is when he first first came yeah. out. And and then the the Dungeon of Doom was real big around that time. And yeah, he he won the the world the, he won the World Heavyweight Championship on wow. his very first match as as a uh, competitor. So, you know, it, they already had it was clear that they were going to invest heavy in. Uh, the, uh, the giant at that time. And so, yeah, we see this, you know, less than two years later with, uh, with sold out and, you know, so two years later after, you know, he continued to be on the big names, continue to be a main event player, you know, he's having some dissension within the NWO and, you know, uh, uh, Hogan, you know, of course, the NWO was still relatively new at that time, you know, yeah. in a year because uh, uh, Bash the Beach 96 is when the NWO formed. Mm -hmm. And Big Show, you know, already 
he's 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 one of those people who are you know uh in the hunt or a rival of nwo at that time if you're a rival of nwo like you you've made it you know the the, the goldbergs yeah. the ddps you know the, the the giants you've made it if you were a rival in the, in, the, in the nwo that was the hottest thing going at the time we see with sold out 97 and you refed it kind of give us some uh some things that that was talked about in, in, in backstage uh, I, you know, on that particular pay per view, I refereed every single match. Mm-hmm. You were so, in the NWO, Nick. Yeah, I know. Mean, <laughs> to, to do an entire three hour pay per view, right, even though I was younger, you know, but man, that's that's a lot to remember. Yeah. So uh, I and I had to, to get with each match and each you know guy and then uh, find out if there was anything in particular. But I, I tried to keep it really. Uh, generic so that i could uh remember you know you're not going to remember three hours worth of stuff right there's no way so i just told everybody look man i'll just follow you and if there's something specific that you need for me to do then tell me and then we'll get it you know but otherwise i'm just gonna follow you yes. uh, that's how i did it but uh paul you can see that in that one that he was uh he hadn't quite his, his personality hadn't quite come out yet yep. uh I watched uh, two different matches today. I watched that one, and then I watched uh, the sold out the very next year, the '97, I think it was. Kevin Nash with uh, yeah. '98 was the one with Kevin Nash. Yeah, yeah, and you could see a huge difference in just his ring presence. And mm-hmm. uh, a whole year had transpired by then, yep. and and uh, which is a credit to him. You can see how much better he had gotten. You can mm-hmm. see him you know, less tentative in the ring. He was sure of what he was doing. And then when I saw, oh my goodness! Did, did, do you remember the finish to that uh, match with him and Nash? Was that the uh, crazy power bomb finish? Oh yes, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't ref that one, so uh, mm-hmm. that didn't really stick out in my mind. <laughs> when I saw that today, my son was watching it with me. We both at the same time was like, oh yeah, broke the neck. Yeah. Oh, it was brutal. Listen, yeah. you know, if you think back at it now and you look at both guys. The physics could have told you that that wouldn't go to work, man. <laughs> Come on. Jeez. That was brutal. But, oh, he's lucky he made it through that. Yeah. Yeah. That could have been a career ending power bomb uh, right there for sure. Yeah. 